Hello, uh, my name is Adam Vincent. I'm the general manager for Lime Decarbonisation for Calix. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through and talk to you about uh, our project Lilac, um, which was a plant that was built in Lix, Belgium, uh, in a Heidelberg cement uh, plant um, for the purpose of demonstrating carbon dioxide capture from the manufacture of lime and cement. So why is lime and cement uh, an issue in terms of CO2 emissions uh, for the world? Um, primarily, uh, the issue with CO2 emissions evolves from the reaction of limestone um, with heat addition to produce lime and carbon dioxide. Um, the total cement and lime industry is accountable for approximately 8% of global emissions uh, and this reaction, unavoidable reaction to produce lime and CO2 is responsible for somewhere between 60 and 70% of those emissions. So this, this production of lime alone uh, globally is in the order of around 5% of global emissions. So it's a very important challenge uh, and the fact that the CO2 from this process is unavoidable um, means that it can't be dealt with uh, straight with the use of renewable uh, energy sources for example um, it's inherent in the process itself so how does the calyx technology capture the co2 that is released from limestone when it's heated to create lime in this diagram on the left here you can see a simple depiction of our reactor effectively what it is is an externally heated reactor so that any CO2 that is released from the limestone as it is heated and reacts is not mixed with combustion gases. Uh, in typical kilns, the combustion gases and the processed CO2 that comes from the limestone are mixed and that creates quite a, di a dilute stream of CO2 that then must be stripped from that gas stream. In our case, any CO2 that is released from the limestone uh, is captured directly uh, and is of high purity. Where in the process does the Calyx technology typically sit? So in a standard cement plant, there is a series of cyclone preheaters followed by an entrained flow uh, calciner uh, that creates the lime from the limestone that's um, fed. Um, this then enters a rotary kiln where it's turned into clinker, um, which is subsequently ground into cement. We aim to simply replace the calcination step uh, ahead of the rotary kiln, uh, as you can see here on the right hand side. So in a cement plant, uh, the calyx calciner would sit in, in this central location. It may physically sit away from the plant so as not to cause interruption to the existing plant and that might be the case where only partial uh, replacement is, is desired for a plant. That's in a cement plant. In a, in a lime plant, the kiln in and of itself uh, is the process. There is very little integration required in that case because lime is the product. So following that uh, brief overview of our technology, I'd like to now walk you through the, uh, the lilac plant, as I said, built in Lix, Belgium, um, for the next uh, eight or 10 minutes. I hope you enjoy it. Project Lilac. LILAC stands for Low Emissions Intensity Lime and Cement. Uh, this project was funded by the EU Horizon 2020 program. Uh, it was commenced in January of 2016 and was completed in June of 2021. Uh, the plant was built inside a Heidelberg cement factory. Uh, as you can see here in the foreground uh, is, is our plant, um, the LILAC plant. Um, it was built to take a slipstream of raw cement meal at approximately 10 tonnes per hour, uh, process that raw cement meal to evolve the CO2, capture that CO2 and return the processed cement meal back to the parent plant. The raw material is uh, taken from the main plant uh, in the background here and it's fed to this silo, the yellow silo here on the right. 
Um, this yellow silo can also take uh, raw limestone from trucks uh, at the back of the plant here. Um, and it also it off offers and provides the storage capacity for the plant of around about 60 tonnes. Um, when the plant is in operation, that the raw material or the, the raw cement meal or limestone is fed via a loss in weight system and pneumatically conveyed up this dark brown line here um, to the very top of the tower. Um, the mixture of uh, conveying air and raw powder uh, enters into a cyclone filter, uh, which is here on the left at the very top of the reactor. Uh, and this is some 65 uh, meters in the air. Um, there's a close-up view of the exit of the filter, uh, the filter itself, and what this does is it separates the conveying air from the raw feed into the reactor. This piece here, uh, this part of the video shows the entry point uh, into the reactor itself, so the powder is separated from the air and then it is fed directly into the reactor. So the, the rate at which the powder is fed has already been determined um, by the loss in weight feeder that is at ground level. Uh, this shows um, the very top of the reactor where the raw powder is fed in. Um, the raw powder travels through a section above the main calciner that is not heated um, and this acts as a bit of a countercurrent heat exchanger. So there is some uh, recovery of energy from the CO2 that's evolved from the reaction uh, with the raw feed. This is the top of the reactor and it shows the bellow that connects the, uh, the top section, the preheater section to the main top of the furnace here. So this is the point at which uh, the reactor is now externally heated below this point. Um, as you can see here, from a distance and then close up, the combustion side of the reactor is has a number of uh, burners located along along its length. Um, this is an example of one of the burners. In total, there's 24 burners from the top of the heated section to the bottom of the heated section. This video playing on the right uh, is a depiction only of the way the powder uh, is moving through the reactor and is heating as it's moving down the reactor over a period of 30 to 40 seconds as it makes its way down the reactor it's heating to the combustion temperature sorry to the reaction temperature and co2 is evolved and it travels up through the reactor and exits at the top um, as it does that, it does carry over some amount of powder in the gas. This is separated in a cyclone and any captured material is returned back to the reactor. So the, we have the gas, CO2 gas, pure CO2 gas going out the top of the reactor. We have the calcine material coming out the bottom. Uh, this level shows us the bottom of the, of the combustor chamber uh, access point. Um, it also shows there that there's some bypass hot gas from the main combustion chamber exiting on the left. At the bottom of the at the bottom of the combustion chamber where the main reactor sits, uh, we have an important feature which is the bellowing system that connects the furnace to the reactor. The reactor extends quite significantly during operation, so this bellow needs to move with that. Uh, with the movement of the reactor and it does that very effectively. Below the bottom of the furnace we have a, a number of hoppers. Uh, this is the very bottom of the reactor. Uh, it shows some ceiling flat valves at the bottom there that uh, help to separate, uh, to help keep any other gases out of the reactor so it's only powder falling through this section. Um, 
in the next slide, we'll see the bellow. This bellow is connecting the reactor uh, itself to any of the equipment below that point. So this is the process side bellow. All the bellowing on this plant is critically important to keep contaminated contamination out of the process. Below that we have another hopper um, where we aim to conduct just a slightly a, a slight increase in the calcination level of the material by injecting uh, steam into the into this system steam or air. Um, you can see that in that partic this particular case that this hopper has a number of attachments for improving powder flow. As we move forward, you get an idea of the scale of the reactor. Um, the, the structure itself is in the order of 10 by 10 meters, as I said before, 65 meters in height. So it's quite a small footprint. Um, we move into the, the operations uh, room where the operators control the process. Um, once the process is started, it's fairly self-sufficient. It doesn't really require a lot of intervention, although this particular plant did have a large R&D um, function, so the, the involvement with the operators is more than you would perhaps expect from a commercially operating plant. Um, at the back here, we have some testing facilities where we're looking at the extent to which the limestone in the cement or straight limestone has actually converted to, to lime is one of our key factors that we're uh, considering here. Uh, the other thing that we look for is the reactivity of the materials that we produce, which is typically quite high um, compared to other types of kilns. So, um, in conclusion, uh, we built this plant, uh, Calix built this plant in conjunction with uh, a number of partners uh, in Lix, Belgium, um, starting the project starting in 2016. We commissioned in 2019, and I'll run through a few of the main outcomes for the project in the next slide. So far in this presentation, we've seen why it's so important to capture CO2 from the lime and cement industry. Um, we've looked at how the Calix technology works by capturing the CO2 directly from the, CO, from the limestone uh, and keeping it separate from other combustion gases, creating pure CO2 streams and we've seen where it fits into a cement plant and how it may also work in a lime manufacturing facility. Um, we had a, an overview of the lilac plant, a virtual tour, um, which shows us the scope and scale of, of the plant. Um, and now I'd just like to quickly finish with some of the major findings from uh, this project. Um, so what we did and proved uh, through building this plant and operating it is that we could run this plant on different grades of limestone and raw cement meal. Um, we showed and measured separation of CO2 at purities above 95% um, but importantly with no unintended air ingress or loss of containment. Um, we were able to achieve the heat transfer from the furnace side um, through the reactor and to the powder uh, to achieve extensive, cal um, extensive calcination of more than 85%. Um, and subsequently in other work and smaller pilot plants uh, run by Calix, we have now shown calcination extensive up to 98%. Um, and we aim to achieve those in lilac with uh, further process enhancements um, as part of lilac 2 project. Um, we found that the energy requirement, we proved that the energy requirement for indirect calcination is not higher than direct calcination um, and that no additional processes or chemicals are required to capture the CO2. A very important finding was that uh, there was no build-up of material on the reactor walls within the heated zone which is critical for maintaining uh, process efficiency. Uh, there's been no negative impacts on the host plant and no impact on clinker production. And finally and most importantly, given the temperatures that are required for, for this reaction, 
that the reactors can safely perform at the temperatures required. So, um, in all, uh, the Lilac 1 project, uh, in our view, has been a great success. Um, it has led to the successful application for uh, Project Lilac 2, um, which will look at expanding the capacity of the plant and adding features uh, that allow us to achieve um, the calcination targets um, that are required by both the cement and lime industries. Thank you for your time today and I'll now be online to take questions. Thank you. Thank you.